Humphreys. Yeah, he shouldn't play Queen-10, but he's going to have to start playing something if he wants to make some noise. No momentum for Allen. Fold it over to Elia Lezra with pocket fours. He can find momentum in any starting cards. Yeah, Ellie has such a joy for lifelong that he brings to the table. I think it makes him a better poker player. Ellie raised it to 600. Lex Veldhaus with 9-7 off in the small blind. 25-year-old pro. Yeah, he can get creative. A raise to 2,300. Well, Lex has a joy for 9-7 off, and that makes him a dangerous poker player. Ellie makes the call. I can make you chip leader of the whole tournament. All right, let's see a flop. Six, ace, five. Elezra still with the best hand. Lex with a gut shot straight draw. Lex was born in the Netherlands, but he's largely a Las Vegas resident now. And he comes out with 3,300. He's got a lot of pep in his step. He does. I like the speech. I can make you cheap leader of all these gentlemen. Well, if you fold, I like it too. He's telling the truth there. Because he's so good, I'm going to fold the pair. Pocket four is in the muck. And Lex shows him the bluff. That's why I'm saying you're so good. Lex showing him the bluff, hoping that the next time he's showing him the nuts. Feldhouse takes a small pot from Ellie. I'm telling you, he's the best player on the field today. He's the best player in the entire tournament? Anywhere? Today. 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 Well, I'm sure he's the best one on the table, but I don't know about Allen today on the field. I understand. Allen may disagree, but high praise from Ellie for Lex Feldhouse, who has everyone on their heels. The World Series of Poker, presented by Jack Link's Beef Jerky. Main event. Back inside the Rio to our featured table on day one of the 2009 main event. Lon, have I mentioned I am stoked? <laughs> Lex with King Jack. Lex is 25, but he plays more like he's 26 or 27. A raise to 600. Does Allen have somewhere to go? I wish he'd sit down. <laughs> he folds. Fold it over to Simon Moens. 7-6 of hearts. Moens is 22 years old. I'm guessing he's a Capricorn. He makes the call. He'll go heads up against Lex. Here's the flop. 10-7-6. Moens with two pairs. Sevens and sixes. A swing and a miss by Lex. Lex checks. We saw him once check two pair in an earlier hand. He's not going to make that same mistake again. That's 1100. Chris, raise. <laughs> and Lex with a check raise bluff to 5000. Well, now I think Mwens wishes he had checked. Veldhaus turns up the heat with no hand and no draw. 3900 from Simon. He makes the call. Veldhaus has seized control of the pot with that check raise. Turn card queen of clubs. Mwens still best. Veldhaus picks up an up and down straight draw. And he's firing like he's already got a made hand. 6,800. Yeah, he picked up a straight draw, but he doesn't have a club. He doesn't have a pair. But Lex has enormous pep in his step. And if you're Mwens, you have to worry that Lex check raised on the flop with a club draw and got there. Well, Mwens is going to come along. So now the river card is a four of clubs, four clubs on the board. But as you said, nobody's got a club. So Mwens with the check mark, two pair. Lex has king high. And Lex is going to bet 7,000. Veldhaus raised pre-flop, check raised the flop, let out on the turn, and now value bet bluffs the river, and all this activity holding absolutely nothing. Well, this board set up pretty well for a bluff there on the river with all those clubs. Well, Moines over there looks like he's caught in a traffic jam and doesn't know whether to get off the next exit or stick to the freeway. Moines gives up the best hand. Lex shows the bluff once again and takes the pot the only way he could. Yeah, Translation, you scallywag me. Lex Veldhaus may be young, but he does not lack experience. Playing extensively online, he's quickly learned what can take years to master. The only one who can dish it out. Time now for our Jack Link's Beef Jerky Wild Card Hand. We'll conceal one player's whole card so you can test your poker rating skills. This, of course, accentuates my unmatched analytical prowess. Simon wins. We know what he has. Pocket ten. Oh, but I can tell you what suits he has, Lon. <laughs> A raise to 900. Lex Veldhaus now. 25-year-old pro. He has the wild card hand. Good luck figuring him out, Norman. He's got it. I am <laughs> overmatched. I'm going to take a sick day, Lon. <laughs> he makes the call for 900. I'll put him on medium-suited connectors, but don't hold me to it. Over to Alan Cunningham. Alan with Ace Jack. Alan doesn't seem quite with it, but makes the call. I don't like the way he flicked that chip in. His head's not in the game. Three to the flop. Four, Trey Deuce wins. No improvement on his pocket tens. And he checks. Lex now. That's 2,300. 
See, if Lex has, say, 8-9 suited, that missed him unless he has hearts. Now, the old Alan Cunningham would sense weakness here and raise with nothing. But with two overs and a wheel draw, he folds. Now to Mwens. Pocket tens. I'm telling you, Lex has squad douche. We've seen this movie before. Three baby cards on that flop. He will call. I don't like that call. You have to raise Lex. Turn card, nine of hearts. Mwens with a flush draw. He checks again. Now Lex. Never shy about betting, and he comes out with 6,000 here. If Lex has hearts, Mwens is in awful shape, but I still think Lex has air, so I want to see Mwens check-raise Lex from here to Dusseldorf. <laughs> Put in a raise, son, and you'll see where you stand. Be a man. 22-year-old German student. Do it. We got bluffed earlier by Lex. Just calls. I'm not happy with that. Uh, we, we don't get any more information on Lex's hand with just a call there. River card is an ace, and Mwens has more to worry about. That could sink his ship. He checks a third time. By checking again, Mwens has handed the keys to the bank to the robber baron. All in. And he bursts through the safe door all in from Lex Veldhaus. You, you gotta love Lex's style. Yeah, I think he has squad douche on a stick, but that bet is for all of Mwens' chips. So ask yourself at home, folks. If your tournament life is on the line and you don't know what Lex has, what do you do? So many hands might beat you now. Muck it, son. Simon folds the tens. I don't blame him. If he was wrong with his read, he'd be gone from the main event. And Lex shows a bluff king six. Oh, oh man. My read was right, but then I didn't trust it. Sorry, Simon. I screwed us up. This is the second time he showed bluff to Simon. Who would put him on king six? That is the Jack Link's beef jerky wild card hand. Shame on you. Most people in this room are playing their cards. Lex Veldhaus is playing poker. Time now for TV bracelet in 2007. He has queen nine off suit, a call of 300. Well, he served four years in the Israeli army. Lex Veldhaus with 6-4, yeah, a raise. Why not? I think Lex served four years in a trade school for bluffing. Pocket queens for Brian Pincus. Re-raise. My daughter tells me this morning, you've got to be very, very quiet so you don't wake up the donkeys. Well, he was very loud with that re-raise, and that should clear out the riffraff. That does clear out Elia Lezra, but not Lex Veldhaus with 6-4. Well, that cleared out some of the riffraff. There's the flop, 8-5-5. Five, five. Queens are still good for Pincus. Lex picked up a gut shot straight draw, and he's going to bet it, of course, 5,200. The Lex Veldhaus circus act continues, a stop-and-go bluff there. Pincus thinks about it, then makes the call. Lex with a lot of pep in his step, but he's bound to step in a hole, no? Turn card, another eight. Two eights, two fives on the board. Lex needs a t-shirt that says, full speed ahead. Yeah, 10,700, more than half the pot is the bet. Anyone can make a pre-flop bluff or post-flop play, but to fire a third bullet on a bluff, Lex pressures Pincus into a tough decision. Oh, and he gives up the queens. Lex has done it again. And he shows again. Don't show another bluff. Stop it. Lex with a clinic in putting your opponents to the test and watching them fail. Lex running over this table. He lived by the sword. He's going to die by the sword. Lex Veldhaus has the flashiest sword in town. Where else can you pay $10,000 for this much fun? Brian is good-natured about being, what would you say, hornswoggled? Something like that. All right, let's go. King four, four. of spades. Wait, it's like of course he made it 4,000. <laughs> oh, look, it's Alan Cunningham. Or, or he used to be Alan Cunningham. Queen Trey, he folds. Man, he hasn't seen anything to play today. No. Over to Simon Moyens. Seven, six of hearts in the big blind. Well, he is in the big blind, but he has been so battered by Lex, I think he should just avoid him at all costs. No. All in with seven, six of hearts. This is the main event. All in? I never saw that coming. He's got... Sixty big blinds left. Fold it over to Lex. Well, maybe it'll work, because the last obstacle is Veldhaus, and he'd have to put in a lot of chips to defend the honor of his king four. Well, Lex has the best hand. Wins is slightly favored because Ellie folded a king, and Lex makes the call. That's a good call. He's got the right price. He's in a race. And he is tormenting poor Simon Wens. How did you know you got the best hand? It's Lex Veldhaus. Yeah, who are you, sir? I'm Lex Veldhaus. <laughs> the ultimate torment now. Wins at risk. King High still best for Lex after the flop. I still don't know how Lex made that call. 
Eight of spades, a gut shot straight draw for Simon now. Um, wins now will need a six, seven, or nine, or swam boozled. River card is a four. Simon wins is eliminated. So playing seven, six for all your chips in the main event can get you knocked out, right. Norman. Who knew? Okay. Simon wins swept out of here by Hurricane Lex. <laughs> He's rather subdued. Why did he call? <laughs> and certainly Thanks, a bit man. stunned. Thank you. And now he's learned to never try and con a con man. Yeah, it's true. Raise up to 6,000. Tom opens to 6,000 here. Double the raise he's been making from the button previously with seven deers. That's highly unusual. Yeah, I had, had to do seven again. I wanted to just take it back. You don't have to do seven. Tom announces his hand, and Sammy doesn't believe him. You don't have to do seven. It's funny. I mean, what would you make it six X with? Obviously, he's trying to take the net. Either seven deuce or a very strong hand trying to look like seven deuce, I think. That thousand? How much? He's bet nearly the size of the pot, and Sammy calls here. It, it, Tom should pretty much be done with this at this stage, right? I mean, well, it's hard to say. Raise. Oh, Sammy has raised Raise it here. Twenty-seven. A little check raised to only twenty-seven thousand. You can really see how that big bet preflop compounds on itself to build a gigantic pot. Had only been six going into the flop. Maybe Tom bets five and Sammy raises to 15, but now we're building a huge pot here. Feels like kind of an optimistic call. I mean, that deuce of hearts, you know, the heart will come and, and Tom could be could in big trouble. Be behind. I wonder if he's reading something into that raise size by Sammy. It reminds me a little bit of the Queen Jack hand, where Sammy had Queen Jack and Tom had 7 5 on Queen 6 3. And Sammy made a little check raise, and then Tom ended up bluffing him out of the pot. I wonder if something similar might be going on here, if Tom thinks Sammy has made that check raise with a medium-strength hand that he might not be willing to get all his chips in with. That's, that's a big bet. It is. 48,000? That's... 48. <laughs> that's a crazy bet. I mean, like, Dirk could... He must think he's drawing dead right now, Durr. He probably thinks he's got a shot at the heart being live, but a whole lot of the time, yeah, he'll be drawing dead to a small or medium flush or something like top or second pair with a big heart. Time to give up. He's come this far. It's got to be tempting to try to win that 162000 in the middle one way or another. Surely Sammy's checked the call here, and, and Durr knows it. Sammy has a stronger hand than I think Tom would expect. So you're thinking maybe he's got something like just a dry king of hearts and he can take him off it? Or something like king jack with the king of hearts, king ten with the king of hearts for a gut shot as well. Come on. No! Wow! That is a gigantic bet! No way. More than double the pot! What is Sammy going to do here? This is making things awfully tough on him. <laughs> you know, he's, he's checked there. He's checked there to call instantly, hasn't he? And now... That was the plan, but that plan goes out the window when your opponent pets over double the pot. He doesn't have 479, but he's got a lot of chips. About 360, I believe. He's gone. I think he's gone like white. Look at you know, this is all fun and games way back when this started. This bet. This is serious. This is serious. Yeah, I think the stakes might be getting to Sammy now. This is a big bet. Over a third of a million dollars. What has he got to tell himself? What's going in his head? What do you say logically right now? 
Just put the dollar amounts out of your mind. Think about the logic of the pot. What can Tom have here? Tom can have a lot of things here. He can have a flop set that's now filled up. He could have the flop nut flush. He could also have a bunch of different bluffs. He could have easily taken one off on the flop with the king of hearts or the queen of hearts. Yeah, turns out he took one off on the flop with the deuce of hearts to set up this bluff, but it's hard to picture Sammy expecting that. And you do have to think back to the $6,000 raise pre-flop, too. That really changes a lot about this hand. There's something weird going on right from the first bet here. He's looking at him. You can stare at Durr all day long. And he's just going to have that same... Sammy hmm. might be thinking Tom could have aces with that big raise pre-flop. It's down to the two black aces. Sammy's got the Ace of Diamonds in his hand, and the Ace of Hearts is on the board. <coughs> Would he have played Aces like this? Quite conceivably. There's no street where I think he definitely would have done something different. I mean, I know Durr plays takes like this all the time, but this, this is a big pot. This is a big bluff. Yeah. He... Gotta be, he's got to be scared that Sammy's going to call. Yeah. Sammy looks like he's going to call. He looks like he's... This is the pot to get him even. Yeah. Sammy calls here, and he's ahead. Tom will have only about 120000 left in front of him. Sammy will be up 130000 <sighs> Looks like Sammy White's getting ready to get rid of those cards. Wow. Oh, you can't fold, Sammy! There it goes. <laughs> and Tom will table the 7-2 to collect an additional 10,000. Ouch. And he told him right at the outset of the hand, I have 7-2, I just wanted to pick up the blinds. Sammy said he didn't believe him. And he didn't. This pot will go down in the history of TV poker. This was just incredible. There's an elephant in the room. It's the seven deuce. I thought you had a flush when you were thinking so long. I have a flush, I'll call you instantly. <coughs> you can't call instantly. Yeah, I can. Two times a pot. I thought you, um... You know something, you made it 6,000, huh? Cool. Nice hand. I mean, this hand's gonna be talked about forever. Uh, what an interesting hand with the dynamic of the seven dudes and an amazing bluff at the end by Tom Dwan. This is a very, very exciting hand and uh, showed just what a true talent Tom is at just gauging his opponent and uh, finding ways to win pots you would think was almost impossible. I, I hate Sammy's playing this hand actually. I, I think, I mean, it's all going well up until the turn. And then it, I, I'm just thinking, oh, he's just check call the river, no problem at all. Well, he was and, intending uh, to check call the river, right? Yeah, why didn't he check call the river, Ron? I think it was because the bet was just too big. I mean, he just didn't want to be out, didn't want to be out of the, the hand, and, you know, the, the board kind of uh, got a bit ugly. I mean, Tom could have a three. There are certain hands he could have now that he's losing to. Do you to think him. he got intimidated by the money, though? I mean, I don't know. I don't know. think he got intimidated by the, by the money, but the fact that it was all his stack more than the, the cash yeah. amount. I mean, up till now, when I've looked at Sammy, he just looks like someone that's having fun. It might as well be like a £10 tournament. These are just play money chips. You know, people. Some guy once said that the guy who invented chips is the real genius in gambling. And 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 for Sammy, like looking at him, this doesn't look like half a million, a million, two hundred fifty thousand at a time. It just looks like a load of pieces of plastic. But He's come to in me. that hand. It looked like real money to me, and I felt like he got intimidated by the money. And Tom Dwan, though. I mean, this was 
Like, he's, he's a loser. He's gone from over 400K up to about 150 down if, 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 if Sammy just calls there. This was, I mean, was it sick or was it smart? Well, it was uh, spectacularly well judged, I think. He, he knew where he was. He's on the table in the hand facing the guy. And sometimes you get an, a unique insight. It's easy for us sitting here when we can see the cards and, uh, and thinking about uh, the situation. But when you're actually there, he maybe just saw a, a small gap where he could win the pot. Well, I'll tell you what the small gap was. I'll tell you what the small gap was. There was a gap here. Tom went to reach for his chips on the river and Sammy did the thing that you should never do. He defensively picked up his big chips as if to say, if you bet, I'm ready for you. And when they do that, they're never ready for you. They're always folding. And that's what Tom saw, I think. Sammy's in trouble now. I'm afraid so, Jack. Tens for Durr, sevens for Phil. You checked? Yeah, he did check. Both players check the flop and Durr makes trips. How much? Twenty-seven six. Dwan bets twenty-seven thousand six hundred, and Helmuth quickly calls him. Phil Helmuth is drawing dead here. Boom. Almost ninety thousand dollars in this pot. Both players have plenty left behind. Juan moves all in. He's got Helmuth covered, so the bet's 119 and change. What an awful spot if you're Phil Helmuth. The five on the river, unlikely to have changed anything. And the one man at this table capable of firing a $120,000 bluff on the river is the man sitting across from you, Tom Dwan. Wow. Good bet, kid, good bet. Durr is absolutely stoic, giving nothing away.
cops. more comfortable. It's going to take another 20 minutes. Oh. Easy going. That's over 100,000. People can take as long as they want. No, no, it's okay. I didn't say nothing. Oh, no, no, I know. This one could take a while. Poker After Dark, the cash game continues right now. I'd like to make some Phil Helmuth is still deep in the tank. We should. He's faced with an almost $120,000 bet on the river from Tom Dwan. What do you think Tom has and what do you think Phil has? Well, I personally do believe watching Tom Star. Make a lot of sense if he actually has a big hand. He has a little dance. And I do believe, I'm fairly certain that Phil Hummel has a queen and a good kicker. This is kind of my read on the situation. But I would say of the two, Tom is very unpredictable. And he could also be trying for the big bluff here. I'm pretty sure that Phil has a queen. At least has a big some care and kind of a big pair. But uh, it's a very tough bet. It's 120000 and there's a lot of money out there, so it's understandable that Phil is taking his time. If you were in Phil's shoes, what would you do? Uh, I would, uh, first of all, I would order a scotch. <laughs> scotch. Drink, drink it very fast, and then say, you know what, I think I'm going to wait for another day. Throw the hand away, and, and then maybe order another one. Okay. All right, thank you. Yeah. You said, and Don said no for 500? No, he didn't take it. He didn't take it. You lay me three to one? No, no. Because he's close. I'm telling you, hey. Yeah, Phil got, no, you want three to one. Phil got the queen. Yeah. Phil got the queen. Strong queen, too. You hate to be playing the guessing game if you're Phil Helmuth here. To recap what happened in this hand, Elia Lesra opened the pot for a raise to 1400, Phil re-raised to 5400, and then Dewan out of the small blind made it 16-1. Ellie folded and rather than throw it away himself, Helmuth made the call for an extra 10 and change. Both players checked the flop. There was a bet out of Dewan of 27-6. On the turn, Helmuth called it. Dewan bet the river huge. And that's where we are now. I'm sorry I'm taking so long, guys. Take up to four days. This time. The beginning of day three, I will have left the building. <laughs> I'm gonna look like an idiot if I'm wrong. I'm gonna look like a genius if I'm right. Wow. I will give you. That's why Big Butt Poker Bed credit. Yeah, he, he has a good blank stare. A completely blank. <laughs> big Bed Poker usually sure. works out like that. When you win big, it's because you're a genius. Better than you, but feel not to do it better than me.
I call. Three tens, yeah. Nice time, buddy. Thank you. And just like that, Tom Dwan takes down an almost $330,000 pot. He goes from being stuck huge to a small winner. Jack Tom. I knew he started with nothing. I just want to see what a monster like this looks like. Should I just rearrange it? You go like that. Oh, and yeah, and then you make it 15,000, I see. You a dark. Good hand. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, it's true. Up to 6, Tom opens to 6,000 here, double the raise he's been making from the button previously with seven deers. That's highly unusual. Tom announces his hand, and Sammy doesn't believe him. You don't have to do seven. It's funny, I mean, what would you make it 6x with? Obviously, he's trying to take the. Net. Either seven deuce that or thousand. a very strong hand trying to look like seven deuce, I think. That thousand? How much? He's bet nearly the size of the pot, and Sammy calls here. It, it, Tom should pretty much be done with this at this stage, right? I mean, well, it's hard to say. Raise. Oh, Sammy has raised Raise it here. Twenty-seven. Little check raise to only 27,000. You can really see how that big bet pre flop compounds on itself to build a gigantic pot. Pot had only been six going into the flop. Maybe Tom bets five and Sammy raises to 15, but now we're building a huge pot here. Feels like kind of an optimistic call. I mean, that deuce of hearts, you know, the heart will come and, and Tom could be in big trouble. Be behind. I wonder if he's reading something into that raise size by Sammy. It reminds me a little bit of the Queen Jack hand, where Sammy had Queen Jack and Tom had 7 5 on Queen 6 3. And Sammy made a little check raise and then Tom ended up bluffing him out of the pot. I wonder if something similar might be going on here if Tom thinks Sammy has made that check raise with a medium strength hand that he might not be willing to get all his chips in with. That's, that's a big bet. It is. That's <laughs> That's a crazy thing. I mean, like Dirk had He must think he's drawing dead right now, Dirk. He probably thinks he's got a shot at the heart being live, but a whole lot of the time, yeah, he'll be drawing dead to a small or medium flush or something like top or second pair with a big heart. Time to give up. He's come this far. It's got to be tempting to try to win that 162,000 in the middle one way or another. I mean, surely Sammy's checked the call here and, and Durr knows it. Sammy has a stronger hand than I think Tom would expect. So you're thinking maybe he's got something like just a dry king of hearts and he can take him off it? Or something like king jack with the king of hearts, king ten with the king of hearts for a gut shot as well. Come on. No! Wow! That is a gigantic bet! No way. More than double the pot! What is Sammy gonna do here? This is making things awfully tough on him. <laughs> you know, he's, he's checked there. He's checked there to call instantly, hasn't he? And now... That was the plan, but that plan goes out the window when your opponent bets over double the pot. Doesn't have 479, but he's got a lot of chips. About 360, I believe. I think he's gone. I think he's gone like white. Look at you know, this is all fun and games. Way back when this started, this bet. 
This is serious. This is serious. Yeah, I think the stakes might be getting to Sammy now. This is a big bet. Over a third of a million dollars. What has he got to tell himself? What's going in his head? What do you say logically right now? Just put the dollar amounts out of your mind. Think about the logic of the pot. What can Tom have here? Tom can have a lot of things here. He can have a flop set that's now filled up. He could have the flop nut flush. He could also have a bunch of different bluffs. He could have easily taken one off on the flop with the king of hearts or the queen of hearts. Turns out he took one off on the flop with the deuce of hearts to set up this bluff, but it's hard to picture Sammy expecting that. And you do have to think back to the $6,000 raise pre-flop, too. That really changes a lot about this hand. There's something weird going on right from the first bet here. He's looking at him. You can stare at her all day long, and he's just going to have that same... Sammy might be thinking Tom could have aces with that big raise pre-flop. It's down to the two black aces. Sammy's got the ace of diamonds in his hand, and the ace of hearts is on the board. <coughs> Would he have played aces like this? Quite conceivably. There's no street where I think he definitely would have done something different. I mean, I know Durr plays stakes like this all the time, but this this is a big pot. This is a big bluff. Yeah. He, he's got to be he's got to be scared that Sammy's going to call. Yeah. Sammy looks like he's going to call. He looks like he's this is the pot to get him even. Yeah. Sammy calls here and he's ahead. Tom will have only about 120,000 left in front of him. Sammy will be up 130. Looks like Sammy might be getting ready to get rid of those cards. Wow. There it goes. <laughs> and Tom will table the 7-2 to collect an additional 10,000. Ouch. Um, and he told him right at the outset of the hand, I have 7-2, I just wanted to pick up the blinds. Sammy said he didn't believe him. And he didn't. This pot will go down in the history of TV poker. This was just incredible. There's an elephant in the room. It's the seven deuce. I thought you had a flush when you were thinking so long. I have a flush. I call you instantly. <coughs> You can't call it instantly. Yeah, I can. Two times apart. I thought you, um... You know something? You made it 6,000, huh? Cool. Nice hand. I mean, this hand's going to be talked about forever. Uh, what an interesting hand. With the dynamic of the seven dudes and an amazing bluff at the end by Tom Dwan. This is a very, very exciting hand and uh, showed just what a true talent Tom is at just gauging his opponent and uh, finding ways to win pots, you would think, was almost impossible. I, I hate Sammy's playing this hand, actually. I, I think, I mean, it's all going well up until the turn. And then it, I, I'm just thinking, oh, he's just check call the river, no problem at all. Well, he and, was intending uh, to check call the river, right? Yeah, why didn't he check call the river, Ron? I think it was because the bet was just too big. I mean, he just didn't want to be out, didn't want to be out of the, the hand, and, you know, the, the board kind of uh, got a bit ugly. I mean, Tom could have a three. There are certain hands he could have now that he's losing to. Do you to think him. he got intimidated by the money, though? I mean, I don't know. I don't know. think he got intimidated by the, by the money, but the fact that it was all his stack more than the, the cash yeah. amount. I mean, up till now, when I've looked at Sammy, he just looks like someone that's having fun, 
it might as well be like a ten pound tournament. These are just play money chips. You know, people. Some guy once said that the guy who invented chips is the real genius in gambling. And 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 for Sammy, like looking at him, this doesn't look like half a million, a million, two hundred fifty thousand at a time. It just looks like a load of pieces of plastic. But He's come to in me. that hand. It looked like real money to me, and I felt like he got intimidated by the money. And Tom Dwan, though, I mean, this was. Like, he's, he's a loser. He's gone from over 400K up to about 150 down if, 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 if Sammy just calls there. This was, I mean, was it sick or was it smart? Well, it was uh, spectacularly well judged, I think. He, he knew where he was. He's on the table in the hand facing the guy. And sometimes you get an, a unique insight. It's easy for us sitting here when we can see the cards and, uh, and thinking about uh, the pit situation. But when you're actually there, he maybe just saw a, a small gap where he could win the pot. Well, I'll tell you what the small gap was. I'll tell you what the small gap was. There was a gap here. Tom went to reach for his chips on the river and Sammy did the thing that you should never do. He defensively picked up his big chips as if to say, if you bet, I'm ready for you. And when they do that, they're never ready for you. They're always folding. And that's what Tom saw, I think. Sammy's in trouble, though. I'm afraid so, Jim. Yeah, it's true. Raise up to... 6, Tom opens to 6,000 here, double the raise he's been making from the button previously, with seven deers. That's highly unusual. Well, I had, had to do seven again, I wanted to just take it down. You don't have to do seven. Tom announces his hand, and Sammy doesn't believe him. You don't have to do seven. It's funny, I mean, what would you make it 6x with? Obviously, he's trying to take the... Either seven deuce or a very strong hand trying to look like seven deuce, I think. Ten thousand. How much? He's bet nearly the size of the pot, and Sammy calls here. It, it, Tom should pretty much be done with this at this stage, right? I mean, well, it's hard to say. Raise. Oh, Sammy has raised Raise it here. Twenty-seven. little check raise to only 27,000. You can really see how that big bet preflop compounds on itself to build a gigantic pot. The pot had only been six going into the flop, maybe Tom bets five and Sammy raises to 15, but now we're building a huge pot here. Feels like kind of an optimistic call. I mean, that deuce of hearts, you know, the heart will come and, and Tom could be could in big trouble. Be behind. I wonder if he's reading something into that raise size by Sammy. It reminds me a little bit of the Queen Jack hand, where Sammy had Queen Jack and Tom had 7 5 on Queen 6 3. And Sammy made a little check raise, and then Tom ended up bluffing him out of the pot. I wonder if something similar might be going on here if Tom thinks Sammy has made that check raise with a medium strength hand that he might not be willing to get all his chips in with. That's, that's a big bet. It is. 48,000. That's, <laughs> that's a crazy thing. I mean, like, Dirk could... He must think he's drawing dead right now, Dirk. He probably thinks he's got a shot at the heart being live, but a whole lot of the time, yeah, he'll be drawing dead to a small or medium flush or something like top or second pair with a big heart. Time to give up. He's come this far. It's got to be tempting to try to win that 162,000 in the middle one way or another. I mean, surely Sammy's checked the call here and, and Dur knows it. Sammy has a stronger hand than I think Tom would expect. So you thinking maybe he's got something like just a dry king of hearts and he can take him off it? Or something like king jack with the king of hearts, king ten with the king of hearts for a gut shot as well. Come on. No! Wow! That is a gigantic bet! No way. More than double the pot! What is Sammy gonna do here? This is making things awfully tough on him. <laughs> you know, he's, he's checked there. He's checked there to call instantly, hasn't he? And now... That was the plan, but that plan goes out the window when your opponent bets over double the pot. 
doesn't have 479, but he's got a lot of chips. About 360, I believe. It's all fun and games way back when this started. This bet. This is serious. This is serious. Yeah, I think the stakes might be getting to Sammy now. This is a big bet. Over a third of a million dollars. What has he got to tell himself? What's going in his head? What do you say logically right now? Just put the dollar amounts out of your mind. Think about the logic of the pot. What can Tom have here? Tom can have a lot of things here. He can have a flop set that's now filled up. He could have the flop nut flush. He could also have a bunch of different bluffs. He could have easily taken one off on the flop with the king of hearts or the queen of hearts. Yeah, turns out he took one off on the flop with the deuce of hearts to set up this bluff. But it's hard to picture Sammy expecting that. And you do have to think back to the $6,000 raise pre-flop, too. That really changes a lot about this hand. There's something weird going on right from the first bet here. He's looking at him. You can stare at Durr all day long. And he's just going to have that same... Sammy might be thinking Tom could have aces with that big raise pre-flop. It's down to the two black aces. Sammy's got the Ace of Diamonds in his hand, and the Ace of Hearts is on the board. <coughs> Would he have played Aces like this? Quite conceivably. There's no street where I think he definitely would have done something different. I mean, I know Durr plays stakes like this all the time, but this, this is a big pot. This is a big bluff. Yeah. He... scared that Sammy's going to call. Yeah. Sammy looks like he's going to call. He looks like he's... This is the pot to get him even. Yeah. Sammy calls here and he's ahead. Tom will have only about 120,000 left in front of him. Sammy will be up 130. Like Sammy might be getting ready to get rid of those cards. Wow. Oh, you can't fold, Sammy. There it goes. <laughs> and Tom will table the 7 2 to collect an additional 10,000. So. Ouch. And he told him right at the outset of the hand, I have 7-2. I just wanted to pick up the blinds. Sammy said he didn't believe him. And he didn't. This pot will go down in the history of TV poker. This was just incredible. There's an elephant in the room. It's the seven deuce. I thought you had a flush when you were thinking so long. I have a flush, I call you instantly. <coughs> you can't call it instantly. Yeah, I can. Two times apart. I thought you, um. You know something, you made it 6,000, right? 